I'd like to introduce you to a mate of mine. His name is Entropy. Now, it's his job to wind the universe down, and he's been doing that since, well, the Big Bang, and he's actually rather good at it. Thanks to him, as time has gone on, the universe has been moving towards total disorder. And one day, probably, the whole universe will power down. It might just fade out, or it might keep expanding out into infinite space, whatever that even means. But in any case, one day it's all going to be game over, I'm afraid. Sozzles. But there is another side to this. Entropy's mate, Complexity, has a different job. She's been hard at work since the beginning of time as well, and she's more or less responsible for, well, everything we like anyway, including stars, planets, that galaxy that looks like it's swearing, Hot Pockets, the Kama Sutra, and of course, the human race. Entropy and Complexity are working as hard today as they've ever been. The universe is still winding down and taking whole galaxies with it, and burning the stars out, and melting the ice in your whiskey, but Complexity is operating alongside and stars are still being born, and thanks to us, things are still getting more complex, on Earth anyway. And I mention all of this for a reason. The universe appears to be a bit meaningless, as I've pointed out six or seven thousand times already, and that's fine. There's a good word, telos, which means the ultimate aim of something, where it's going. For those of you on Team God, well, religion has already given you the telos for the universe. God put it here, presumably. But for everyone else, there isn't a telos, really. The universe is just here to wind down, thanks to entropy. And that can be a bit bloody depressing at times. But maybe there is a telos behind that. The universe started as physics. Chemistry was built on top of that, then biology, and at the very top, would you look at that? It's the universe's favourite bipedal hominids, us. As far as we know, you are the most complex thing the cosmos has done to date. But complexity doesn't come for free. If you want to freeze water, making it more organised, you'll need a freezer, and for that little bit of order, lots of disorder is produced, just by the freezer running in the first place. A lot of disorder for a little order. Likewise, if you want to make plants and sea lions and talking monkeys on Earth, you'll need millions of years of the sun slowly wearing itself out, again increasing the overall entropy of the universe. A lot of disorder for a little order. Nevertheless, if alien telescopes looked for complexity rather than light, they would see a universe moving towards total disorder, but just tucked away in an obscure patch of the Milky Way, they'd probably find these little, adorable, miniature, hairless, rather aggressive, warmongering, suicidal, nuclear apes. A little bibble of complexity, holding out against the universe of increasing entropy. It's easy to feel lonely when we look out into space, and maybe we are alone. But our entire species is the direct result of a conversation that's been going on between entropy and complexity since the birth of time itself. One day, stars will stop being born, and galaxies will collide or collapse, and entropy will almost certainly increase to maximum. But in the meantime, there have been some rather neat developments, even if they are just byproducts, us being one of them. And that seems like a rather nice telos for the universe, and for us. Brilliant accidents every now and then, on the way to oblivion. Even if creation is only here to wind down, and there's no purpose to any of it, and nothing means anything after all, our species is, as far as we know, right now at the top of the complexity pyramid, holding out against relentless entropy. And that is what could be called, in scientific terms, a pretty fucking privileged position. Happy New Year, you bloody animals. Have a good one.